multiple sorting criteria, we have done custom sorting criteria, we have done reverse order sorting, sorting a list of objects. Next, we will try to see another type of sorting, which is also a sort of a custom sorting where you need to sort a list of string based on the index of the first occurrence. Roots.sort, when you directly apply the sort method on your collection is when you want to do the in-place modification of the list. This list itself is modified. But when do you want to use collections.sort? Suppose you want to create a new list, copy your current list items into the new list and pass that copied or the new list into this so that you don't want to affect your existing list. This is where your collections.sort can come in handy. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. We have recently hit 1000 subscribers, so thank you so much. Okay, so we have been doing this core Java interview questions and one of the videos from here, Java 8 Streams API hands-on code examples has been gaining a lot of traction among the community. So it has got a lot of views. So one of the things which has stand out in this video is the code examples that we have done using Java 8 Streams. Today, we are going to do something similar with comparators. So here is a readme of the comparators. We will not talk about comparator versus comparable or any theory about comparators. This is going to be hands-on coding questions so that from real life perspective, the day-to-day -day problems, the day-to-day -day questions that we might have to solve using comparators, how can we deal with it from the very basic, from the very scratch. So this readme has all the important theory, the concepts that you need to know if you're completely new to comparators, comparators and interface. The most common question of comparator versus comparable, all of that is also documented. So I would suggest to go through this readme first if you are completely new to comparators and then continue watching this video where we will step by step solve a couple of coding questions from the very basics to the point where we see the Java 8 improvements that have come in with comparator interface also. So that is what the plan is for this video. So let's begin. And also the code is documented in this GitHub repository. So please check it out. So as we discussed, we will do some coding questions. Okay, so into the ID, these are the five criteria that we are going to deal with today. We will see how to sort a list of objects, custom sorting criteria, multiple sorting criteria, case and sensitive sorting and reverse order sorting. So these are the five different types of sorting criteria that we are going to see and how can we use comparators over there. As part of Java 8 also, if you see the comparator interface, there are, as it, as it is mentioned in the Java, uh, as, it, as it is mentioned in the Java docs, there are many new methods that have come in, the default methods that have been added to this interface. For an example, then comparing. Now, then comparing is something which we can be seeing when we do the multiple sorting criteria. So these are the new methods that have come in and these new methods, you're expected to know these methods, you're also expected to know how to implement these methods in solving real world coding questions. Like for example, reverse order. There's a built-in method. You don't have to write the code to reverse the order. Only we are going to see some small code demo today. Bunch of coding questions. We are going to write the code of. So let's begin. First of all, you see the first question is you are asked to sort a list of strings based on their length in ascending order. So we have two criteria. First is the length. Based on the length, we have to sort and in ascending order. So how can we do it? So the very first intuition is we will take the fruits, the list, the name of the list, and we'll call the sort method. So okay, so we'll call the sort method. Now, as we see, the sort method takes in a comparator. Now we are not going to write a class that will implement a comparator. We will try to do it using lambdas. So how can we do this? So fruits.sort is going to modify this list in place and it can take in a parameter which is going to be a comparator. Now see how can we use the built-in static methods comparator dot what we want to compare we want to compare the length the length of a string is always returned as an integer so we'll say comparing int then what do we say string the class string has a method which is called length so on the basis of the length i want to do the comparison and that is it now let's try to print out the fruits So let's run this. So we see that the on the basis of the so we see that on the basis of the length, the fruits have been sorted. First the length was four, then five, then six. In this way, they're sorted on the basis of the length. 
So this is how you can use the comparators to sort strings basis of the length. So this is how in place modification of the list happened. There is one more way to incorporate this sorting that is to use this class called collections which also has a sort method and it takes in a list that you want to sort and it also takes in the comparator. So if I just copy this, I will tell the difference in a bit. So let's just copy this and we can comment out the previous sort and we can just print this out. This is also going to give you the same output. But there is a difference on when do you want to use what. This is also another way, way, way to sort it using the collections class. Roots.sort, when you directly apply the sort method on your collection is when you want to do the in-place modification of the list. This list itself is modified. But when do you want to use collections.sort? Suppose you want to create a new list, copy your current list items into the new list and pass that copied or the new list into this so that you don't want to affect your existing list. This is where your collections.sort can come in handy. So this is the first question, how to sort a list based on the length where we discussed about sorting a list of objects. The next thing is, we want to sort a list of integers in descending order. So this is more of the reverse order sorting that we have talked. This is also very simple. We will mostly try to talk about in-place sorting only instead of using the collections.sort, but I just wanted to talk about the difference. That is why I have shown in the beginning. So over here also, what we will do is we will use comparator. And then there is a method called reverse order, which, which we have already seen. So what we are saying, apply the reverse order sorting to this. Now let's try to print this. So we'll say nums in reverse order. And we'll try to print the list. And let's run this. So this is how we get all the numbers in the descending order. It is that simple. Moving on to the next one, sort a list of employees based on their age in ascending order and print the result. Now, this belongs to this category of custom sorting. So, so far we have dealt with sorting based on the existing property, like strings, length. Okay. But now, what if you have a custom class like an employee and that class has an age property? I mean, the employee has an age and based on that you have to sort. So, how can we do this? So let me take you to the employee class quickly. So it's a standard employee class, age, ID, salary, name. All of this is there. We will say employees.sort. Now over here, we will say comparator dot comparing. Now again, age was an integer type. So same thing, comparing int we will use. Then we will call which class we want to use and which property we want to use. That's it. So we will say comparing int will compare the integer values. That is the, it will take the age of the employees and based on that it will do the comparison and if we run this so we have all the employees now sorted on the basis of their age so we have age 21 two employees then 28 and then we have age 30 so this is how we have sorted the employees based on their age the next is multiple sorting criteria which we were talking about where we will see that, okay, if the ages are same, compare them by salary and print the result. So then how can we do this? We'll utilize the same list. What we will do, employee.sort. First, we need to compare it based on their age. That is what we will do. So first, we'll say compare it based on the age. Then, if they're same, so now we will invoke the second method. This is how the multiple sorting criteria happens. So then comparing. So then comparing is like if your ages are same, now what do you want to compare with? Now I want to compare basis of the salary. We'll just say get the salary. So in this way, you can chain it. Then comparing, you can keep on adding. So it will form like a nested chain of conditions. So, so if the ages are same, like we have seen that Harsha and Tony has the same age, then you have to compare it basis of the salary. So now let's try to print that. So here we have now that. So the output of this is so we saw that Tony and Harsha have the same age, but the salary of Tony is less. And because by default it works in the ascending order, so first Tony is listed, salary is 1000, then Harsha, whose salary is 4000. And then rest is same the age 28 of Harsha and 
age 30 of Ramesh. This is how it will work. So we have done multiple sorting criteria. We have done custom sorting criteria. We have done reverse order sorting, sorting a list of objects. Next, we will try to see another type of sorting, which is also a sort of a custom sorting where you need to sort a list of string based on the index of the first occurrence of this character E in each string and then try to print the result. So how can we do this? So let's say we want to use this particular fruits list only. And we want to sort it now relative to the index position of the first occurrence of E, which is nothing but the index of method which we have to use. So we will say that fruits dot sort. And now we will say comparator dot comparing in because index of returns the uh, value of uh, the, ind the index position, which is an int. Now what we need to do now over here, um, let's say I'll just write an lambda expression and I'll say e dot e dot index of of what of the character c. So you compare it fine but basis my condition is you compare it on the so what we say is you compare it on the basis of whatever is returned by the index of of this particular character it will be e and then you do the comparison. So sort it on the basis of whatever the index position. So wherever e appears first you print that string first and wherever E appears later, you print that string later on. So this is how we have written the expression. And now let's try to see fruits with index position sorting. And let's print out the fruits. Okay. So kiwi is printed first, followed by banana. Then we have elderberry where E has occurred twice, but the first occurrence of E is index number 0. Cherry index number 2. Pineapple index number 4. And apple where the E is at the last. Now, a quick question in the comments which you can put it. Do Why, why do you think kiwi and banana has appeared first and not at the last? Okay. So, that's a trick question. But I'm sure many of you who have been doing lead code for some time must be able to answer this. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we will now talk about sorting a list of strings, ignoring the case insensitivity using a case insensitive comparator. So, I have written a, a list already where the numbers, sorry, where the fruits are in mixed case. So, now if they are in mixed case, how do we sort them similarly? But we have to make sure that the case insensitive thing is being taken care of. Now, to do this case insensitive ordering, what we will do is we'll write a comparator of string where we'll call it like case insensitive comparator. And then the string class has a case insensitive order. Now, the string class also provides this comparator called case insensitive order, which works on this new class called case insensitive comparator. So this is a static class which also implements a comparator. And there we have the logic to do the case insensitive ordering. So we'll make use of this comparator, and this is what we are going to pass in to sort the fruit mix list. So we will just pass the case insensitive comparator to this, and then we will try to print it. So much of the work is already being done by this particular comparator. So you just have to make use of it. This is what it is trying to sort by sorting it in lexicographic order, but taking into account that case cases are not the mixed case is not considered. Like A appears first, followed by B, then C, then E, then K and B. So that order is being taken care of. Now, irrespective of whether it was lowercase or uppercase, the sorting has happened in the lexicographic order. What if we didn't pass this case insensitive comparator and we would have written something like collections.sort and just directly passed in our list? We'll comment this line and now let's try to run this. So, you see, now the ordering is not correct. So, followed by apple, we have kiwi and not banana. And then it's messed up. So, this is how you should be using case insensitive comparator when you have mixed case data in the list. And uh, this is about the case insensitive criteria which we have talked about. So now, we are left with only one question, the final one, which is how do we sort a list of dates in ascending order using the comparing method? So, this is also going to be very simple. So, all you need to do is you have the dates. So, dates is also a list of local data. 
So list can be on the basis of any data structure. So now you have a list of local dates. So how do we do it? Similarly, we will use dates dot sort and we will say comparator dot comparing. So comparing is a generic one. But if you want to be specific about the data type, so int, long, low, double, all of that, then you can use the respective one. The so comparing is a general one. Now over here, we don't have to do anything as such. You just have to pass in a lambda expression just to take in the date. This is how the expression would look like. And now let's try to print the dates. Ideally, we should be able to get the list of the dates in the sorting, like in the ascending order. So we have 15th March followed by 10th May and then 1st July, right? So this is how we can use comparators in a bunch of different scenarios that we have discussed in this video. I hope with this, you guys have got a fair idea of how to use comparators in day-to-day -day sorting related in day-to-day -day sorting related logic. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any concerns and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We have come a long way and we also look forward to growing this channel so we would need your support your invaluable support we have achieved the 100 we have achieved this thousand subscribers milestone we hope to achieve many more so please be with us and continue to support us as we try to deliver more and more valuable content thank you so much